October 16th, 2022, 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side, and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word. 
Be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells us a parable today that shows he has a sense of humor, or at least that's the opinion of Professor Luke Timothy Johnson in his commentary on Luke's gospel in the Sacra Pagina series. It's the story of a judge who's badgered by a widow to give her a favorable decision in her case. The judge, and we're meant to see him as a Gentile official who's not particularly religious, finally gives in. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. Uh, Professor Johnson translates that last phrase, she will end up giving me a black eye. Contemporary readers can easily imagine, he says, the woman hitting the magistrate over the head and literally giving him a black eye. We're meant, I think, to laugh, he comments. Now, the point of this colorful parable is a serious one, however. Told as part of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, the parable is part of an alternating pattern which Professor Johnson has previously pointed out. Along the way to his ultimate gift of self on the cross, Jesus as prophet gives his disciples instructions and admonishes his opponents who reject his teachings. We'll hear a story directed to that latter group next week. Today, the disciples are meant to be encouraged by the contrast between an unjust judge, very much like the conniving manager we heard about earlier in the summer, and God. As Professor Johnson notes, God's patience is greater and God's response in prayer is faster for his elect. But there's a caution to this tale. How firm is our faith? In the final judgment, will Jesus' followers remain persistent in living a life of prayer. The parable is told, Luke reminds us, about the necessity to pray always without becoming weary. Now we may be caught up in how to pray or in expectations on how prayers are answered, but there's a deeper lesson. A follower of Jesus must live in a constant stance of trust in God, persistent in living a life of prayer.